navigating the invisible realm series settlement sunday number one and today's topic is called settle my case settle my case Let me tell you why we have this series. One of the reasons why we have this series, I think I should start there, is what is the advantage or what is the, what is the aim, what is the essence of going to navigate the spiritual realm for nothing? No, we navigate the spiritual realm to l- make connection to God. That's why. Everything we are navigating, we as believers, we navigate the spiritual realm to connect to God. Like we are connecting to God now for our case to be settled. So we are also navigating what? The spiritual realm. So even when you have the gifts of the spirit, it's still to navigate the spiritual realm. A prayer, it's still to navigate the spiritual realm. A fasting, it's still to navigate the spiritual realm. It's about navigating that. We con- that navigation that will connect us to the Almighty. That's where the solution is. Everything stops with God. Everything starts with God. So why do you go to somebody else? So... This settlement Sunday is about connecting to God. The God who is the only trusted solution provider. And we visit you today in the name of Jesus. And and do you know what? And this is what, what makes me happy. We even have an invitation, open invitation to come. We have. It's our covenant right. We couldn't cover those things, but it's there. I mentioned it now. It's our covenant right. We have a standing invitation and we don't use it. Listen, from today, when you want to pray, don't pray as if it's compulsory. No, don't pray as if um, I, I need to just fulfill all righteousness. No, pray as honoring an invitation. Okay. Pastor, what do you mean? Okay. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Mm-hmm. Come to me. How many? All you who labor and are heavy laden. Is that not invitation? Eh? Is that not invitation? It's invitation. It's a standing invitation forever. Once you get born again, redeemed by the Lord, you have a standing invitation to come to God. That's why if you don't pray, it's a sin. Because you are disobeying the invitation. You are ignoring the invitation. You are rubbishing the invitation. You are abusing the invitation of the Almighty. Remember the parable of, of, of the banquet. Those who didn't come, God said they will never come again. He said, go outside on the street. Pick anybody who came. You shall not wear a wrong dress. In the name of Jesus Christ. You shall be ready on the day of your invitation. Eh? Huh? Now we... Listen to me. Edda is reading that scripture. I want to show you another version of it. So look, listen to it. It's an invitation. Read it. Start. Come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh, 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 oh. Did you hear that? Satan can never say that. Demon can never say that. <laughs> it's only God that can say it and has the power to say it and has the audacity to say it and is declaring his supremacy telling you I am able to issue such an invitation because I have the capacity to make it good Uh-huh. Verse 29. Uh-huh. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in mm-hmm. heart, and you will find rest for your for souls. Your soul. See? Simple. Invitation. So, oh Lord, I have come for the invitation. 
You know, sometimes when you read the Bible, you just say, no. When the Holy Spirit ministers a verse, a verse for you, it's like, eh? Where have I been? It's an invitation. It's been standing. You've been passing it. Many of you know that scripture, if not all of you. But we, we don't... Don't attach so much importance to it. No. Today, don't, don't you ever look at it as if it's ordinary. No. It is a permanent invitation to bring that problem to me because I have the capacity to do something with it. Amen. And to make it sweeter, we even have access. You know, he gave invitation and he gave us the vehicle to carry us there. I'm talking of your covenant right there. Eh? I told you before, that is the only thing you have. Anything that is not in the covenant, you are not entitled to it. God is not bound for what he did not say. God cannot be committed outside what he has said. You are only entitled to what God promised. And they are all in the covenant. That's why covenant is in the head. I don't joke with it. Once I see it there, I consider it done. That is the winning formula. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18. It says, you are free to come. I have provided a way. Huh? Ephesians 2. 18. 18. Mm -hmm. But through him, through him, we both have access. We have access. By one spirit to the Father. Bam. Through Jesus Christ, we have access by one spirit to the Father. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one can get to my Father except through me. You know, some uh, religion, they don't like it. That's why we are not religion. They want to group us as religion. We are not religion. There is a desperate effort to, let me tell you, the coven has scattered and the coven wants to retreat in honor. They will retreat in disgrace. Yeah. And they know it. And they know that I know it. They are scattered. They are retreating now. Carrying out their vengeance on some other people. They want to dis discredit God. <laughs> this almighty that can take their breath off let me tell you something you have as much access to God even more, better than angels some angels don't have access that you and I have there is no angel that is inside Christ but I am inside Christ you are inside Christ a am I lying? No. We are seated with him where? In heavenly realms. Angels that are bowing to Christ are bowing to us. That's why the Bible says, we shall judge angels. First, first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 3 says, we shall judge angels. How can you judge angels when you are inferior? No. In Christ, we are seated now in Christ. We have access. So when you are praying, your voice will come from the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ to the Father. He hears you. Say you have access. I'm trying to make things easy for us. You see, those things they are talking there, it's not Christianity, it's religion. We are believers, we are members of the house, we belong to the family. We don't do religion, we are believers, meaning people who walk by faith. They just shall live by faith. So anytime you want to come down to Christ, no one thing. One, you have an invitation. Two, you have an access. You have direct access to him, the Father, through the Son. Finish. Once you can allow that to sink in your heart, there's no prayer you pray that will fail. Yeah. Before you open your mouth, he will answer you. I'm talking from my own experience, and it's in the Bible. No, we are carrying the load that somebody told us, bring it, let me remove it from you. 
Mm -mm. Say no. Wait, let me carry it a little bit. Let me carry it a little bit. Let me remove no, 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 no. I want to carry it a little bit more. I'm coming. I will come later. Where, where are you staying? I am there. Okay, let me go to Po. Then I will enter and, uh, to Katima. Then I will see whether I will uh, visit somebody in uh, uh, Botswana. Then I will pass through uh, Zambia and get to South Africa. Then maybe I will visit Nigeria. Then I will start coming. Don't worry, I will get there. Some never get there. But you could have gone like this. Sha. I don't blame those who are mocking God in Namibia because they hold important positions. I don't blame them. It's Christians are blame. They are the ones that make God look small. His churches are blame. They are messing up with God. If they operate as God wants it, who is that person that will open the mouth they used to pray Satan? To talk bad about God, that tongue will be clipped. You will not be able to talk. Hmm. There's a secret I want to open today. And you must listen to me. This secret is one secret that you and I don't, we don't want to accept. And it is the reason why people fail. What is that secret, Pastor? Pastor, what is that secret? This is the secret. Many people don't know how to be successful. I will repeat it. Many people don't know how to be successful. Check yourself. You know that I'm talking. What you consider as success is actually failure. The thing that makes success, you will not like it. You will not consider it. Before, I used to think that I need to go to the mountain every day before God will answer me. I'm not anything against mountain. I discovered that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. God is so simple. God is so simple. Please, you see, we're making, I, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm not trying to make you feel good. I'm talking from word of God, I will show you, and from experience. God is so simple. Sometimes I say, Lord, one day I say, Lord, Lord, you are almighty. You spoke. This whole universe is still expanding. And it's still, and you have time for us. Have you forgotten that we are dust? Or is there something missing that you forgot? So one day I told him, I said, Lord, I don't know how to thank you. When I want to thank you, I don't know where to start. He said, yes, it's true. <laughs> I said, yes, sir, it's true. One of the most difficult things for me is to thank God enough. No matter how I spend time, I never get enough. Because as I'm thanking him, he's doing. As I'm thanking him, so you can't beat him, you can't match him. If you understand him, you win souls like this. Look at what the, the book of Proverbs said. Because some people don't want to understand what I want to teach today. You must understand it in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs chapter 1. Verse 29 to 33. Proverbs 1. 29, 29 to 33. Because they hated knowledge uh -huh. and did not choose the fear of the Lord, uh -huh. they would have none of my counsel no. and despised my every rebuke. Yeah. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way yeah. and be filled to the full with their own fancies. Mm -hmm. For the turning away of the simple will slay them. Yeah. And the complacency of fools will destroy them. Yeah. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely. Hallelujah. And will be secure without fear of evil. Did you hear that? That is a wisdom from the Almighty. 
I pray today that what I'm going to teach in this series, when we start, as we are starting it now, it will see not just in your head, it will enter your heart, it will change your lifestyle, and you begin to eat the fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. <sighs> you know why I'm preparing you for this thing? Because Namibia has a big habit. Christians in Namibia, they have a big habit. I don't know whether to call them Christians. With all due respect to all of them. Our world, yes, is not perfect. There's no place that is perfect. Where I come from, it's not perfect. It's even worse. But let me tell you, there is a big problem here that is making this small population to disregard God with so much obnoxiousness. When they want to disregard God in Namibia, they do it without any fear that he exists. In fact, they don't even think, what if? What if it's true that he's God? That's why every day we are praying, Lord, please have mercy on Namibia. Lord, we, don't, we, don't, we don't miss because we know, we know the danger. We know what God can do to this country. We know. I know. We prayed yeah, last night till 2. We are praying. We are still praying. Lord, have mercy on Namibia. Because some of the people in position, they are doing nonsense about God. They don't know what they are doing. They don't know what they are doing. I'm not saying it to threaten anybody. No. I'm saying because God is not me. Neither is he a church. God is almighty. And nobody can tell him what to do. Nobody. But Namibian Christians have this habit that has made them not to know who God is. If you see how people are going back, especially West Africa, see how they are fighting to know God because things have changed. Conditions have changed. Nations have changed. Environment has changed. The spiritual dimensions have changed. The, oh yeah, yes, I'm talking of dimensions. They have changed totally. But in Namibia, it's like yesterday is the same as today. And tomorrow is the same as yesterday. Just let us go on. We, we are praying, serious. If we, in fact, we spend time praying for Namibia. Spend time. I'm not saying it for, uh, for anybody to praise us. We're not, we're not interested. The praise is coming from God. Because we know what Namibians are doing. That thing they are doing is the doom of many nations. It brings disaster. There was a time they were doing it where I came from. And the problem is that Namibian nation doesn't want to learn from those who made mistakes before. They were doing it. They were even harassing churches, talking anything. Where I came from before. When people started looking for sugar, for milk, Asa, when she came, we queue for sugar, for milk. She, when she came, Asa, she, you, you queue. People died on the queue. I lost some of my colleagues on the queue. Is going to get milk and sugar and 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 and, and uh, uh, some other things and rice and yes yes the economy went bananas that was how pentecostal power came up that changed everything when people began to acknowledge god that place began to change Within our own eyes, this thing disappeared. I'm a testimony. I was there when it started. I was there when it ended. And I see Nang Namibia going through that part. With, in fact, with gallantry. As if Namibia was created by them. Or Africa. No! The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world that they that dwell therein. Namibia is not an exception. Don't toy with the Almighty. 
I don't care who you are. Don't toy with the Almighty. He said, the complacency of fools will destroy them. Say, it shall not happen to Namibia. It shall not happen to my family. It shall not happen to me. In Jesus' name. If you want God to settle your case, there are certain things that must be in place. Yes, we have prayed the prayer. Yes, he has answered us. But there is a difference between answer and manifestation. Ah, Daniel was praying. Have you forgotten? And he said, the moment you open your mouth to pray, God answered you. You know what is written in Daniel chapter 10? He said, but to manifest, I was held back by forces. Another war started. So manifestation is the mother of testimony. Until you are manifested, you have no testimony. If you are pregnant and you begin to uh, come to the altar here to tell us, uh, I, I, thank God I delivered yesterday, and we we'll see you are pregnant, we will not allow you to give that testimony. Is it not true? Because it's a lie. You have not delivered the baby. You are still having the pregnancy. Is it not so? Yeah. Answer is pregnancy. Delivery is testimony. What did I say? Delivery is what? When you put the bed, the baby is born, then you can testify. And from today, you shall testify. Yeah. But there are some things you must understand about God. And that's why it looks as if your testimony doesn't come. Because there are certain things you don't know about God that we need to share. That's why we start this series on Settlement Sunday. I don't know how many I can take now. I'll just take the one I can take so we can close. The first thing you must do for you to have your case settled is one. You must make God your friend. <laughs> Very simple. <laughs> make God your friend. You must make God Almighty your friend. <laughs> How do I make God my friend? A. 1A. You must obey him always. John 14 verse John 15 verse 14. Quick. I decided to prove it with scriptures so that you know. John 15 verse 15 14. verse 14. You are my friends. If, if you, you do whatever I command you. Finish. You are what? My friend, if you do what I say. If you obey me. You want to be the friend of God? You must obey him. Yeah. When you start doing the things the way you like it. And you say, say to my case. It won't happen. And that is what gives some of these people the chance to come and shout. Yeah. Yeah. Those churches. Did that. No. They will shout it because we are disgracing God. We don't. No, the God we serve. We don't know the God we are expecting to solve our problem. So I don't blame them for mocking God. I don't. We don't know the God we serve. If you want to be a friend of God, you must obey him. You see that in the church here? Sometimes I pray and I will see some of you. You are not here for God. You know I know. But you are here. How will he solve your case? No, you are here to make sure that God, your case is never solved so you can have a, a bad report to give out. I was there. Nothing happened for me. Nothing will happen. And the church of God cannot die. You can't kill it. It will keep on marching on. I didn't hear, ma'am. You want to make God your friend? You must obey him. One, two, that's A. B, you must love him always. I don't say sometimes. Always. 
Proverbs 17, 17. Proverbs 17, 17. You must love him always. Proverbs 17, 17. Proverbs 17, 17. Yeah. A friend loves at all times. A friend does what? So if you are a friend of God, you must love him how many times? All times. All times. You must love him all times. Otherwise, you are not a friend. Number C. If you want to make God your friend, you must always believe him. Believe him. You must believe him. Always. You must believe him. James chapter 2, verse 23. James 2, 23. You must believe him. James 2, 23. James 2, 23. Yeah. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, uh -huh. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him uh -huh. for righteousness. Uh -huh. And he was called. He was called. The friend of a God. A friend of God. Because he believed him. Did you see that? Scripture is very clear. It's there. Only that we don't see it. So I'm bringing it out to you now by the grace of the, uh, of the Lord. So you understand. If you can change, allow God to change you with what you are, this series. My friend, you will never cease to have testimony. I challenge you to try it. You will never cease to have testimony. You will be different. You will be. And imagine all of us here being different. Those who are mocking God, they will be silent. Your testimony will silence them, and so shall it be. I say your testimony will silence the enemy. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. You must believe him always. D. If you want to make God your friend, you must be faithful to him always. Faithful to him always. Proverbs 27, verse 6. Proverbs 27, verse 6. Proverbs 27, verse 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful what? Are the wounds of a friend. That even if you are going, what does it mean? Even if you are going through certain uh, situation that don't look nice, you still trust him. Because you know he's your friend. And you are his friend. You still trust him. You will say, I, I know this too much. I give up. I don't know this God now. Eh, eh, eh. You say, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Even if a friend wounds you, you, you bear it because that wound will not kill you. He that the Lord loves, he does what? He chastises. Am I communicating? If you make God your friend, even if you die, he will wake you up. How many of you remember the story of Lazarus? Why did Jesus go to Lazarus? He was what? His friend. Meaning, Lazarus was doing all these things while he was alive. Then he died. Jesus was far away. The moment he died, Jesus knew he died. Because a friend, you see, I, 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 I was reading one app. There. I saw one app. They say to locate your, your family, your loved ones, uh, to locate them, see where they are. I say, look at. I don't need, no, I don't, I don't need that app to know who, where you are. No. With all humility and honesty, I don't. If anything is going to happen to you, and you are under this ministry and you love God, bah! you will tell me before it happens. This one, GPR is to show you after you are dead. He cannot show you before. He cannot help you in any situation. But God will see before the thing comes. He will say, this person. I, I, there are many I have written down. Many. Sometimes if I say, okay, the person needs to do something, I call. Say, my man, call this person. It's not because uh, magic. No, I'm here. I may not even know the name. I'll describe the person. Describe the person. She will begin to find out who is this person, who is this person. Especially when the person is not in a group. It becomes very difficult for us. They begin to ask. He used to do this. He's like this. He was like this. He's like, do you anybody know this person? Sometimes we don't succeed. We start praying on our own. 
So, why does it come? Friendship. Friendship moves the hand of God. Divine friendship. That is the only friendship you must never cease to have. In fact, if you have to have any friendship at all, the first one will be, will be to, with God. Because when other people fail, that friendship will never fail. What did I say? So when the brothers and sisters failed, friend came to save Lazarus. Am I lying? Martha was there. He couldn't do anything. Only cry. Eh? Mary was there. She couldn't do anything. What did she do? She only cried. And then they maybe gathered a few family members and put the man in the, in the tomb. Finished to rot. He's dead. But the power of friendship moved Jesus. He shall move somebody for somebody. The power of friendship moved Jesus and something happened. We all know what happened. But let us see what Jesus said before he moved to that place. John 11. Verse 11. John 11, 11. To 14. To 14. This thing is said. And after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps. Our what? Our friends. Did you see what he said? Our what? Our friend. Did he say my brother? Did he say my uncle? He said my our friend. But that I... was what saved Lazarus' life. The power of divine friendship. He shall locate you in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But I go that I may wake him up. Did you hear that? He said he's sleeping. And they didn't understand that he means I won't let him die. The disciples were confused. At the time, they, they didn't understand. Everything that has died in your life, because of today's friendship you have with God, I command them to wake up. I command them to wake up. Not because, not because you are my son or my daughter or my bloodline. No. What are we called? Brethren. Friends in the Lord. I said the power of divine friendship shall wake up every death in your life. He shall wake them up. He shall wake them up. He shall wake them up. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said, he's sleeping. Let me go and wake him up. He can only be asleep. He can't die. How? When I'm here. Then his disciples said, uh -huh. Lord, uh -huh. if he sleeps, uh -huh. he will get well. <laughs> However, Jesus spoke of his death, uh -huh. but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in uh -huh. sleep. Verse 14. Uh -huh. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Uh -huh. Lazarus is what? But he said, well, I'm going to do what? To go and wake him up. Did he wake him up? Yes. We all know the story. And I'm speaking, that relationship that made Lazarus to come alive after four days in the grave, he will visit every good thing in your life that has died. In your body, in your health, in your finance, in your marriage, in your education, in your career, in your anything, in your business, I command them to come alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Your star that has died, he has no right to die, and he has no permission to die. For Jesus said, I came that you may have life. I command that you are destined that die to wake up. No, 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 no. I'm looking for one person or two person. I command that destiny that die to wake up. Wake up, 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 wake up. In the name of Jesus, every struggle in your life ends today. Uh, I think you didn't understand me. It was something, let me break it down. It was something that killed Lazarus. It was something that killed him. Remember? It was something that made him to die. It was something that was so bad that he, could, he had the power to kill him. And he died. The body stopped. Everything stopped. Then the blood dried up. 
Then the veins rotted. Eh? Because the stomach was already busting. After for the in the desert. Ah. Uh-uh. Go and try it now. See. Don't try it. Though. And then what came from a friend? A divine friend. He said, Lazarus! Come, let us go and have dinner. And lunch. Did Jesus not have lunch with Lazarus? Eh? He did. From today, everything you lost that has been in the grave of the wicked, by the time you go home, at the time you sit down to say, Lord, thank you for this service. You shall be celebrating their being alive. I say you shall be celebrating. 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 You may be seated. Can I share a secret? Today's secret. When things get tough for me, I, I look at that scripture. I say, the blood dried. Then the, bo- the veins busted, died. No veins are very tiny. Then all the systems. Now, please, this is the one that makes me uh, go ballistic. Then somebody says, a comfort. Everything that killed him stayed in the tomb. And the man came out. The blood is working. The vein is working. The heart is working. What killed him remained in the grave. So shall it be for you. I, I, I'm looking for one person who will take it. So shall it be for you. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody saw me. That time I have not understood myself. Many, many years. I want to share it so that somebody may pick what I want to say now or what I've been saying. He looked at me. Maybe he's a prophet or what, I don't know. They used to harass me when I'm passing on the road. You, that man. Some of these person saw me say, hmm. Be careful what you say because anything you say will happen. I said, are you talking to me? He said, yes. I just said, hmm. I mean, it's more than 30 years now. Anything I say with this mouth is the anointing. I said, as Lazarus came out from the grave, and the thing that killed him stayed in the grave, you shall go home today without your problem. I will repeat it for, for those who want to take it. I say, there was a Lazarus. There was something that killed him. But when he heard the voice of my master, that I represent, the voice of Jesus Christ, saying, comfort, comfort. Lazarus came out without his problem. You shall go back to your house today by the anointing of Jesus Christ in this church without your problem. <laughs> The power that killed the problem of Lazarus, it shall visit your problem. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. There's something else. When Lazarus died, his destiny died. His glory expired. His place in the land of the living was folded up and cast out. He was no longer fit to be in the house with his sisters and his relatives. He was now to join those who have become bones and who no longer have a voice in the land of the living. So it is with destiny. 
Because they killed your destiny, you, you no longer have voice. Where you are supposed to speak, you are not there. You are alive, but you are dead. From today, I speak to your destiny. Come alive and take your place in the world. Come alive! Come alive! Come alive! Come alive! Come alive! Come alive! In the name of Jesus! Settled. You may be seated. The day I started making God my friend, my life changed. I went to go and said, Daddy, I'm coming home. Daddy, Daddy I, I messed up there. I'm sorry. I, I will not do it again. Daddy, I don't know now. This one I did. I don't think it's right. Is it right? He said, no. I, I'm sorry. Please show me how to do it well. Yes. That's how I live. That, that's how I live. I said, Lord, this one I did. I, I, is it right? He said, no. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what, how do I do it? He will tell me. Oh, oh Lord, uh, this one I did. Wait, wait, I don't remember when I did it. So I want to know how I did it. So that I will, I will not do it again. He said, okay. He will open my eyes. I will see what I did. I said, oh, okay. I will go and tell that. Say, the Lord said, I did this one, and it's true. Um, I will not do it again. We'll put our heads together. He said, okay, how do we do it? Uh, we'll do it. He said, we should do it like this. He said, okay, we'll do it that way. Finish. He said, friend, I don't have 10 cents. I don't complain. My friend knows, and he's my father as well, and he's almighty as well. So I will always have, there must be provision for a friend. Ay, 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 If you make God your friend, get ready for shocks that will surprise you. I mean, holy, wonderful shocks. It's one of my secrets. That's why I call him my daddy. I have a daddy. Almighty Daddy, He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I have a Daddy, Daddy, I am here. Daddy, I'm, I'm here. Jesus, I am here. I am here for you. Yeah. When is to correct me? You will correct me. When he is to teach me, he will teach me. When he is to rebuke me, he will rebuke me. To bless me, I can't count it. Enough, enough. Because there's friendship. If you walk in the light, isn't it what he said? First John chapter 1 verse 7, as is in the light. You have what? Fellowship. What does fellowship mean? Friendship. Relationship. And what does happen? The blood of his son keeps on washing you. Keeps on washing you. Why? So that nobody can accuse you. That's why he said, who will bring any charge against God's elect? How many of you remember? It's God that does what? Justifies. Romans chapter 8 verse 33. You can't. When he's a friend. It is one problem here. You can't say you are a friend of God. Today, you are disobeying him. You are cheating him. Uh, when, when, you, when you are tired, you can go to your office, but you will not come to church, but you have a friend. No, you are lying. You come to the off church, it's your friend, but you, you don't even check whether his house is neat. Others can do it. You just enter, you go. Or uh, nothing. You, have to, you don't do anything for him. You can't even win a soul for him. Things that he loves, you don't provide for him, but you want him to provide everything that you like, you love. You are a cheat. You are not a friend. Am I communicating? If you love him, 
you want to please him. If you love him, you will not be going to which doctor and then coming to church. You are wearing on your car and you are coming to Christ. In the night, you fly, doing witchcraft. But you love him. No, no, no. You are not a friend. You are an enemy. If you are a friend, then Jesus doesn't need more enemies. You are enough enemy. God is looking for friends. Believe me, I'm not lying to you. I challenge you to put this as your habit. Change. Namibia is crushing and crying because why? We the Christians have failed to let Christ be seen in Namibia. So those who don't like Christ are now making noise. They are making noise and shouting over our failures. They are now celebrating our failures. Mocking our God. How can somebody who is deep in sin be judging the righteous? How can somebody who is deep in, in wickedness be judging the upright? But that's what is happening. Why? Because the upright is no longer upright. He has taken his own way. You see, the complacency of the fool will destroy him. May it not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. You need to stand. Some people can't stand. I'm surprised. You know, COVID is bad. And oh God, it will not come back again in Jesus' name. Amen. It shall continue to die. It shall continue to die in Jesus' name. Amen. But it has exposed Christianity. Many people cannot take one stand over that COVID. They can't. They are falling away. They can't. COVID has made people to choose their bread ahead of God. They follow their bread instead of God. No. Your friend is a friend when there's a problem. It's a problem that identifies friendship. When there's comfort, Anybody can be a friend. Even your enemy will be a friend. Yeah? You understand me? Yeah. But when there's challenge, the true friend will show up. There are friends who will knock on their door. When they know that you have no problem, they will open. I remember something that happened. I'm going to say this with all seriousness because I was shocked. When we were coming, my wife started buying things. Buying things. I can't remember how much. I said, what are you buying this thing for? He said, no, this person helped me in the camp when we were in this place. This person, my hand was swollen. I'm going to give him this. This person was with me. We shared the same room. This person was, I said, ah, he was buying bills. But if you see how much I paid on, on uh, uh, effort to bring th the things, I, I paid almost 15,000 US dollars. My wife was packing things. Back there, I spent almost a hundred and something thousand. It was, you go to the market, buy. I said, is it not enough? He said, no, this is for this. He wrote all the names. This for that, this for that, this for that. So I was looking forward to see these people. So when we arrived and stayed in his, uh, our uncle's place for a while, these people were coming. These are very big people. Big people, government people, big people in various offices. I said, hey, they will come. They will take their own. They will come. That was the first and last I saw them. I never saw them again. So one day I asked, I said, where are these people? He said, ah, in Namibia, <laughs> when you come and uh, maybe you don't have a ministry where you are working, where, working, uh, they don't want you to be a liability, so they will not give you their number or their address in case you want coffee or tea so that you don't ask them for help. They will not come to you. I say, eh, hey, all those people you bought those things for, you wasted my money. You should have told me so I can keep my things. My money does not go for people who are ungrateful. They did today. They never came. Nobody ever asked her, 
How are you doing? Nobody, not one, not half. But they all came and collected those. Everything, the bags were empty. Everything. That is the attitude of Namibia, and that is where they have carried to the church. That is why you don't have friendship with God. That is why a Namibian is more comfortable with a witch doctor. Because you go there, uh, I want to kill uh, Monica. So go and bring three goats. Bring me her picture and her underwear and her whatever. You go and bring it. You give the witch doctor. He will kill Monica. She goes away. I want that job. I want that job. Okay, go and bring the hair of your mother and the teeth of your brother. You go and bring it. And uh, 10,000 for somebody who has no job. Eh? You go and sell the cow of your grandmother and bring money and give to the witch doctor. Those ones, they don't close them. Eh? They don't close them. And then he will do one thing. He say, "This is the this thing. is a poopoo of a, a good way, cook, poo -poo, very fresh poopoo of a kudu that was uh, defecated when rain started falling. And the grass is very fresh. He don't mix it together. He say you should be drinking it every day. You get that job. Whether you get the job or not, it doesn't matter. Namibia has gone. So because of that attitude, Namibians never know how to cultivate friendship with God. It's very difficult for them." You just relationship is one of the greatest crises in Namibia and in Sadek for that matter. That I can say it anytime. So, to if you can't have relationship with the person you see, how can you have a relationship with God you don't see? That is where Namibia has problem, and that's why miracles are far and in between. That's why. You fall in the hands of those who use charms to make miracles. Who do all those things they do? Who tell you to do this, uh, you should eat grass or do whatever. No, no. They will do those things because they are not scriptural. And you will follow them. Why? Because you don't want any intimacy with God. No. You just do it for me and I'm, I'm gone. Oh, pastor. I, good morning, pastor. I say, who are you? I, I, I was in your church. Uh, sometime, uh, are you still in Yanyanke? I will, I'm come, I will come visit you uh, next Sunday. It's not coming home. I say, okay, we are there. God bless you. Remember, we say, you are there. <laughs> Yanyanke. So imagine the last time the person never came there. Some of them will say, Pastor, I, I was, I, I was, I, I, I was in your church, uh, and I get a job. Uh, nice church. I, uh, I, 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 I'll come visit one of these days. Uh, are you still in Tabitha Center? <laughs> I say, yeah, we are in the biggest room there. If you go there, if you go there, you'll see us. There's no relationship. You can't make it with God that way. No. God is very jealous. God is, he, God is looking for a family. He gave his own son so he can get all of us. He sacrificed his son to make a family. That's why the Bible says you are members of God's family, founded on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, with Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. Ephesians chapter 2. Yes, start from verse 19 to 22. It, it's, that's who you are. He wants friends. Everybody who made God friend in the Bible, they all made, they were successful. Everyone that made God their friend. No, you come to church whenever you like. Some of you come to church, it's only in Namibia, see somebody is not feeling well, you will stay in the house. Some people, I'm tired, you will stay in the house. But it's your friend. 
He didn't visit him. He said, I'm just, I'm just in my house. I'm praying with my God. My God. Oh, my God. Those are not signs of friendship. I remember one day I was lying, I was lying down praying. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, Need him. Need him. Need him. He said, eh? It's like, you are not understanding me. You just show me. Say, raise up. Knee down. When I knelt down, I was in front of the Almighty. He said, Hey! I panicked. I said, He! Because I must not be lying down before His presence. Yes. Since that day, even with the knees as battered as they are, I kneel. I kneel. I will kneel down there like that. Sometimes hours. It doesn't matter. I don't want to offend my friend. That's the only person I have. If everybody forsakes me, he will never forsake me. He loves me so much that he gave his best for me. When I cry, he can, it's the only help I can get. When I sleep and I'm unconscious, it's the consciousness I have. Oh. When I'm in the desert, he makes water to come out from the rock for me. He is the God of Jeshurun. Under his arms, I find rest. He said, come on, Tommy. Come and be my friend. I know how to remove your luggage. I have the capacity to do so. See, I have made a sacrifice to create a door for you to come to me. My son paid. He paid. He paid for the blood to flow and make you to have a free ride to me. When you get to me, in my presence there's fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Somebody clap for Jesus. You need to change. Some of us here, mm, 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 mm. no matter what you preach, you always put yourself first. No. God wants you to put him first as a friend. Yeah. As a friend. First. I remember that day, many, many years ago, that day, the God was dealing with me. I was still in the school of ministry. After many years of being a diplomat, he stopped my account, stopped my house, stopped everything, and I began to beg for money because I was arrogant. He needed to break it. Not one year, not two years, three years, four years. I was going through school. So one day, the last money we had, we came to church. Meme looked at me, I looked at her. I said, okay, that's the last money we have. She said, hmm. I said, okay. We put our hand together. We drop it into the box. The last petrol in my car. I said, we'll drive home. By the time, I told you that story, you, you, you always forget it. By the time we got home, I just got home. I like this. My friend is who is a presidential advisor. He called me. He said, Isaac, where are you? I've been there. I have been there for, for all these years. He didn't remember me. Nobody remembered me. All my big, big friends, nobody remembered me. Where are you, Isaac? I said, ah, I'm here. Where is it? Show me. Time. Direct me the place. I said, he? Okay. I directed the place. He started driving. I said, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. now. He didn't take five minutes. You understand? He didn't take five minutes. He landed. I was inside the house. I was trying to change. I don't know what will I give this man now. Okay. I just saw Marcel and Michelle. They were bringing nylon bags. Shim. Shim. I was counting. Uh, until I counted, is it 14? Or what? I don't remember, I remember how many I counted. Uh, and I look at the shop, the name of the shop. Mm. In those days, when things were good, I would have gone there. But now, when things are very good, I, I can't go there. I look at the shop. Then I saw 
Marcel came back or Michelle, I don't know who came. It was Marcel. He was carrying an envelope. A white envelope. I saw that the envelope has belly. He has he's pregnant. He has some <laughs> understand me, somebody. Somebody say it shall be my story. I my mouth was open. So I think I'm coming, I'm coming. The first lady is coming. I have to run. I have to run. It's, it's landing. The airport is very far. I'm coming. Is anyone there? He was gone. I don't think I even saw him. He was gone. We look in the house. Meme looked at me. I looked at uh, everybody stood still because we, have, we were just coming from church. I was already a minister. That's a pastor in the making. Because I passed the first year. So, we just stood. Hmm? It took five minutes before we recollected ourselves. And by the time I counted there, yeah, it was thousands that was put inside that envelope. The shopping that was there could take us four months or five. Why? We made God first as a friend. Finish. We didn't do anything special. And we allowed him to rule our lives. <laughs> Somebody saw me one day. He said, do you care for this con uh, uh, tender? You call it tender. I didn't ask for the tender. He said, man, I don't even know that he's a very senior man in the office. He just come and say, ah, my friend, go, go, do, you, do you care for this tender? I said, what tender is this? I look at it. It's hundreds of thousands. I said, eh? It's okay. I bring it. I didn't even have money to do it. All my accounts were locked. God locked all of them. I couldn't take one money. Millions were inside. I couldn't touch it. That I may know that he can provide for me. Yes. That's why when they're talking of money here, money can't move me. I died to money since. God taught me a lesson. So I said, okay. I took the thing. I looked at it. God said, go to this person. So I went to one friend like that. I only see him in church. I never, we never thought, we only chat. They just know I'm a, a pastor. I said, I have this tender. He said, no, no, I'll give you the money. Just do it and return my money. I said, really? He just entered. Che, 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 take. I counted hundred and something thousand. I said, am I, am I dreaming? In less than, I can't remember, maybe a few days. Bah! All that was whatever was gone. I, I wasn't remembering what money was, whatever. I didn't even care whether my bank allowed, whether they opened the bank or not. I didn't care anymore. God was providing. He taught me a lesson that you depend on me, I will do for you what no man can do. I learned it from there. I learned it the hard way. It was tough because I was arrogant. I was proud. I was full of myself. Correct. So God decided to take me down to under so that I will know I can lock that your bank. You know how do my bank lock? Savannah Bank went into this receivership. Um, Afri Bank, um, not Afri Bank. Uh, I can't remember the name of that bank now. When I came, they said the building used to be here. I bought shares there, millions. I said, what happened? I went to my broker where I put, bought millions also. He said, um, the market is subdued now. <laughs> I went to my own current account. They say, okay, um, this uh, bank, I don't want to call the name now, is uh, doing this, so, so, so. We will, uh, it will take a time 
before they are changing the name and changing. The, where were you? We announced it, announced it, and uh, I said, I'm just coming in from, um, from abroad. Uh, sorry, um, uh, the date closed just a few days ago. I said, eh? In my own eyes, I just saw myself poor in less than 10 seconds. But I had money. Then I went to my house. Ah, the, the tenant said, who are you? <laughs> Took me to court. I had to be my own lawyer. I couldn't pay for a lawyer. Problem everywhere. I had to surrender. I said, Lord, I surrender. I'm sorry. So I drop all my suits. Everything that makes me look cocky, I drop them. He knows. I wear the cell pass. I wear little thing to go. For years. I have boxes of suits. Boxes, those suits I told you, my names are written on it. Yeah. So that God will have mercy on me. You need to make God your friend. He will settle your case. You need to. You need to change. Change that Namibian attitude. Listen, they are mocking God because of you. Because of us. Because we are not showing enough testimony that will glorify God and shut up the enemy. They are now calling you fake. They say your God is fake. Your this is fake. God cannot promote you. God cannot prosper you. God is a liar. God is a... But we know that the Bible says promotion does not come from the east, nor from the west. It only comes from God. He lifts up and he brings low. He takes life and he gives life. Is it not so? Now suddenly, no. You are deceiving the people. I don't blame them. We are to be blamed. As long as you don't do as God wants, he will not change. I never heard where God said, I will change because of you. Mm -mm. Say, I the Lord, I change it not. So that you and me are not destroyed. And thank God for that. How many of you are going to listen to what I'm talking now? You need to change. I will not take more than this today. I will stop. There are many others. You need to change. You need to change. There are things you, we are doing that are not right. You need to change. Make God your friend. Let it be, even if that's all we did today, is, is you have a good bargain. If you make God your friend by obeying him, by being faithful to him, by uh, 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 eh? you believe in him, You say stop, you stop. You say go, you go. Whether somebody is talking, you don't care. You just do what he tells you to do. It, what he tells the Bible is the word God talking to you. You don't have to listen to the pastor always. If the pastor says something that is not the Bible, don't listen to the pastor. Do what is in the Bible. The Bible is bigger than the pastor. The Bible is God talking. Do you understand me? Yes, if the pastor is talking nonsense, something that doesn't correspond with Christ's scripture, rubbish it. Don't curse the pastor, don't fight the pastor, just go to the church, Bible, check it. The burial church was doing it. When Paul finished teaching, to them, teaching them, they go and check whether those things Paul taught them were as true as it is in the Bible. And the Bible said they were more what? They were more what? Honorable. Because they check to, be, to find whether what Paul is teaching is right. That's why we spend time, we give you the scripture, so you can see there are things that make friendship. Abraham was God's friend. We know what happened. He lived 100 and, uh, uh, is it 65 years and was so rich, conquered nations without an army. They took his wife. He said, Pharaoh, I killed you. Ta, 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 ta. Return the wife. Pharaoh returned into Jara with a, 
money uh, uh, surplus. I mean, like, you took the say you took someone. You are a dead man. You are dead. You are dead. You took another man as a prophet. <laughs> Return. I mean, like, say, I didn't touch him. Oh. He returned her with a gift. They will return what they stole from you with a gift. I'm talking to you. Is it that friendship? These are the secrets of Pastor Isaac. That's the secret of all the people I've seen in the Bible. Once you make God your friend, you enter into a new dimension of grace. Once you make God your friend, you enter what? A new dimension of grace. What is hard for others will become simple for you. Yes, 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 what? Yes, you see this uh, touch and go Christianity. Today you are there, tomorrow you are not there. That's not friendship. You see this selective obedience. You select what you want to obey. That is not friendship. I, I can go on. We need to change. This is settlement Sunday. God will do everything you want Him to do as long as. You are his friend. And every friend of God is not unlawful. So when you say, God, bless me with a car, he knows you know that you are entitled to a car. And he will give it to you. You can't tell God, oh Lord, bless me with a airplane so that I can fly. But he knows you are not a pilot. And you can't fly. You don't know how to fly. He will not give it to you because he will lose you. Am I talking to somebody? It's a battle, eh? Friends will attack you. Family will attack you. People will push you. In the office, you'll be hated. In the school, you'll be called uh, Cinderella. I, they used to call my wife Mother Teresa because she doesn't follow them to go and do I didn't know until one day I had the story. They call her Mother Teresa. They will go to do their escape. She'll be the only one left. Now, all of them, none of them is married. She's the only one married. They run. But that time, she was Mother Teresa. I didn't know that. I wasn't there. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. If you want to make God your friend, then Satan cannot be your friend. You cannot make God your friend and you're a witch. You cannot make God your friend and you bring people down. You cannot make God your friend and you're wicked. You cannot make God your friend and you... you, you, you you, you, you are rejoicing because so, somebody is suffering. No, you are wicked. I remember one man who used to say he is a member of our church. <laughs> we told him we are looking for land. <laughs> he said, yeah, I have a land. I'm going to show you a land. <laughs> we said, ah, no, it's very easy. We get the land. He took us Drove to one spa, near one spa, one uh, excavation ditch where they, I think they excavated the place to build some of the houses they built there or construct the road. In Hawkland Park, he said, ah, that's the land. <laughs> it belongs to the city of Windhoek. <laughs> Go there. <laughs> Me and Mehmet, we looked at him. We laughed. The day we got this place, just that, so he was speechless. That was the end. They left the church. He couldn't believe it. When I, I was passing there yesterday, I was laughing. I said, Look at, I called him. I said, Mr. So 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 land. <laughs> you are sitting there. It's not a land, it's not a place to be habited, it, it's not allocated. The city does not give it out. It doesn't belong to anybody. It's an open space, a ditch. To mock our God. But he says, remember. Somebody will come to church. There's a testimony. I'm talking, I need to talk today. A testimony. A praise the Lord. Amen. My mother is a witch. In fact, it's the greatest witch, you know, Okongo. I have been telling her, she's a very, very, very bad witch. Very, very bad witch. 
And I want to praise the Lord that I have not been promoted. I'm not a director in the presidency. And my salary is, uh, let me check it, uh, it is excluding uh, the other thing. It's now, my take home is uh, one million. And um, uh, that excludes the house and everything. You know, so I'm not small again. You know that? Uh -huh. So, amen. That's the testimony. <laughs> Then suddenly, there was a phone, a, a write-up. Uh, that pastor is telling people to tell their mother that they are, a, they are witches. We laughed. We know where it was coming from. In Namibia, let, let me tell you, you are here now. I'm saying this. You are here, you are praying to be free. God sorted that problem. Remember that some of these problems are caused by people in your family. When you are about to come out of that problem, as you are coming out today in Jesus' name, the devil will go and wake them up. Hey, if I was about to escape, the next thing, yeah, uh, they will call. Uh, what's the name of that police now? He has changed her name so many times. I don't know the name now. I can't. Believe, uh, it used to be Fonseca. It, it now it's Da Fonses or Da Bulu Fonseca. I don't know now. The name. Uh, sorry, I don't know. So I, I can't recognize the name now. So I don't know. So uh, is it total name? I don't know. So I was checking the papers before. The papers before, they say for second. Now, they are, the same papers are writing that for something. I don't know. Anyway, so they will call that one. Ah! Then the next thing he heard, phone call. Can I have a chat with the first step? Over this same person. You can't say you are doing that and you say you are a friend of God. No, you are enemy of God. You are giving the time, chance for the enemy of the church to have a, 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 a punch at the church. But you are sitting in the church. You are worse than the devil himself. You are no friend of God. The wonderful thing about Namibia is that some of you had, know how to make friends. Although those, you say, also has a problem of his own. But you can't make friends with God. Your friend is either sex or slavery. Finish. Sex or slavery. That's how they friendship. Somebody who will put you down or somebody who will just have sex with you. It's a friend. That's why I spoke to God. I said, the, this so-called useless non-entity thing called uh, 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 14th of February, shall never again exist in Namibia. And I, I, as I spoke, when I came, I saw women were just buying. I, I counted, I didn't see the men. I only saw one man carrying one miserable flower. I was just, I was just standing by, by, by uh, Venhimo. I said, Mame, I see the women, they are rushing. You see their buttons are shaking. Chwaka, 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 chwaka. They were carrying flowers, big things. I was looking for men. I saw one man. If you see the flower, if they cast you with the flower, you will die. I see my man, there's only one man. Since I've been standing here waiting for you, only one man came out from this venue mall carrying a a flower that is asking for death. I said, where are the men? I started digging. I discovered that the men don't need to buy flower. The women are the flower. I sex you. I beat you. You give me food. I buy me flower on so-called, what do you call it? Valentine curse. I call it a Valentine curse. It's not there. It's not in my Bible. Say, Lord, I say, from today, it shall no longer exist. And it's been going down. So the Valentine day, I was out there, I was looking. I didn't see flower. Both men and female, everybody's looking for bread and butter. I said, God, thank you. 
It shall continue that way. In Jesus' name. Uh uh. What a nonsense. Say, every power that put me in an oppressive friendship, I overthrow you and the friendship. Jesus. How many of you want to make God your friend? How many of you did not make God your friend? Go down on your knees. Begin to talk to God. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't make you my friend. I want to change. Wherever you are, tell him I'm sorry. I was living my own, my own way, my own style. And I'm giving your enemies chance to mock the church and call the church fake and call the Christ uh, fake and call your word fake. And say you cannot do what you what you said. Say I'm sorry, Lord. I disgrace your name because I refuse to do as you want me to do. Have mercy on me. I repent. Help me to change, Lord. I want you to be my friend. Give me the grace to walk with you, to obey you. To believe you. To be faithful in, in working with you. Talk to God. Tell him. I remember what you did for Lazarus. By power of friendship. Please. In this series of Settlement Sunday, remember me. Settle my case today. I want to be your friend forever. Even if you don't settle my case today, I will still be your friend forever. Talk to him. One minute more. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. And the church say amen. Rise up now, rise up and be seated. Be seated. Be seated. I wanted to give Jesus a very good clap. Hey. We are the ones to change the evil narrative against churches. We are the ones to change it. The COVID members will keep on having wrong narratives of church. When a COVID member begins to judge a church, then there is a problem. When Satan begins to judge the church, there is a problem. It means we, the church, have failed. We need to come back to God. Make him our friend. Make Jesus our friend. Be real with him. And he will spoil you. Spoil you for good, not for evil. So shall he be. How many of you understood what we are talking today? I'm looking for somebody who will jump up and say, from today you are my friend forever and I mean it. Want to go. Say it, say it, say it. Don't be forced. You must mean it. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. If you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus. Jesus says, come. I want to be a friend with you. But first of all, let me save you. I want to save you. I died for you. I shed my blood for you. Come to me. I've already finished the work. Just believe me. And I will take away your sins. And I'll make you my friend. And I'll attend to your case. I have the power to do so. I am almighty. If you're there, you want to have a, a relationship with Christ. It starts with you 
giving your life to Jesus, that is getting born again. If you have not gotten born again and you want to do so, rise up where you are, come to me now quickly. Clap for somebody, clap for that young girl. Come, 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 wherever you are, just come. Just come, 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 come. Come and give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Anywhere you are, come and give your life to Jesus. <clears throat> Don't sit down if you have not given your life to Jesus. Come and give your life to Jesus. He died for you, no? The Bible says, while we are yes in us, Christ died for us. In sin, he still paid our price. Him. You online, you want to receive Jesus? Stand on your knees, or stand up, wherever you are, put your hand on your chest, or sit down anywhere, you are, however you want, put your hand on your chest, and repeat after me, you here, you online, say, Father, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose for my salvation. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my life. Take away my sins. Wash me with your blood. Make me a new person. I believe you have done so. And by faith, I confess that I'm now born again. Thank you for saving my soul. I will serve you forever. Amen. If you did that, you are born again. You online, you here. Your sins are washed away. You are now new. Completely new. Everything you did is off. You are back to Christ. Back. Totally back. And no power can change it. I decree you shall not fall. You shall finish well. On the day the master comes. He will not find you or find us wanting. We shall be with him forever in the name of Jesus. Hell is not for us. Heaven is our home. In Jesus' name. Congratulations. <laughs>